Hey guys, Super Sonic One Two Three, aka John here. Welcome to episode number twenty-seven of the Milan Career Mode. For the first game in today's episode, we take on Carpi here at home in the uh, San Siro in the Serie A. Uh, following, of course, our victory over Udinese in last episode, in last game in the last episode, where we beat the current league leaders three-one to they cost the current league leaders, so to speak. Anyway, coming into this game, this will be the team that we play against the uh, recently promoted Carpi. For the first half of this game, Federico Cartavio would uh, pick up the ball here. He would dribble inside a couple of men, play in Bellotti, would give it back to Cartavio. Cartavio would shoot, but his shot would be saved by the goalkeeper, Ferrari. What a name that is, as it's put behind for a corner. Into the second half, then, uh, Comey would have a shot here, saved by Donald Roma, put behind for a corner. And uh, we would retaliate with Pellegrini playing the ball inside towards Milik. Sliding it through towards Cartavia, whose shot on the spin is saved again by Ferrari. Following that, then, uh, Carpi come forward again. Cross comes in towards Puccino, and the striker Puccino gives Carpi the lead here. Makes it Milan 1, Milan nil. sorry, Carpi 1. Uh, 15 minutes into the game or so, as he, the ball gets whipped into him by, on the si from the sideline, and it's heading into the back of that as well to make it Milan nil. Carpi 1. Following that, then we retaliate here with Paul George and Tep finding Cartavia back to Ntep, and Ntep would stab the ball forward, but it would be saved by Ferrari and put behind for a corner. And then following that, Bonaventura would have a chance here. He would slide the ball through towards Arkadiusz Milik, who would shoot, have it saved, but it would be turned in on the rebound by Mbainiang off the bench as our French winger equalised to make a Milan one. Carpi one with 15 minutes to go, having come off the bench. And the man who, in real life, has gone alone to Watford has got out of jail here. Balls played through towards Milik. He shoots Ferrari, who's on his, you know, who's uh, having the game of his life, saves it. But it's turned in on the turn, on the rebound from Mbainiang. Following that, then, uh, later on in the game, David Pino would get the cross in here. Be headed away by Sainsbury out to Dechilio, who would find Milik. And Milik on the turn with an excellent half volley. Scores to make it Milan 2. Carpi won, give us the lead, and surely seal the three points with five minutes to go here. Our French winger Pino uh, crossed it in. It's headed out by Sainsbury, brought back in by Chilio, I think I think it was, and Malik on the turn. Slots a pass Ferrari. Fantastic finish from the 35 million euro man Arkadiusz Milik as he gets hit. I think it, I think this is I think this gets him into double figures for the season, if, you, if I'm correct. Yes, it does. It gets, it's his 10th goal, as it does finish Milan 2, Carpi 1. Following that, then we get our youth squad monthly report here as we enter the month of January, meaning the January transfer window is coming up soon. As we, Well, it is currently happening. As we see how our current youth squad are, are getting on. Uh, we release a couple of players because they weren't up to our standards, but the rest are going to be keep for the moment, for the time being. As also, we're, we get our uh, scouting updates from... Croatia and Italy as well, as you will see those. As these are the players signing on for the field. But and we also have a, a squad report as we do enter the month of um, January. I've obviously entering a new month. We do a, tri a squad report. I've done something different for this squad report. I've shown it to their attributes instead of the other page you could show, just so you see how they're going. In terms of individual stats, if you want to if you want to look at any specific player, feel free to pause the video and uh, have a look at them. But uh, other than that, that's how they've been getting on. Just a quick synopsis, I suppose. Uh, as we enter the, as we come towards the halfway point in the season, following that, we also we also have some player training here for uh, the three men who are currently training. Those being, of course, uh, Kiriakou, Ginakos, and Mariani. At least for the month of December, uh, because we were supposed to have one in the last year of December. You know. We will change them up for the month of January, as I tend to do. We got a transfer off here for Suso of twenty eight point five million or euros, I should say, from Atletico Madrid. Uh, Suso says he's happy to say as well. Right after that, I didn't have a look at what he said, and uh, as uh, we reject the offer for him to go back to his home country of Spain, uh, we also offer in one point five million euros here for Ronald Camille, French left back playing in the Serie A. Yeah, if you, you guessed right, it's Patrice Evra's region, currently in Napoli. We can put in that bed, see what Milan would say. So Jean Luigi John Roma comes to us here, says he wants an increased uh, wage, so we offer him an increase in five k a week. Cause that's what he wants. No extension, but he's already got a, quite a few left in his contract anyway. We get transfer here for Velotti from RB Leipzig for our forty three million euros. We reject that. We're not selling him. And also we get a we get our transfer for rejected for Camille from uh, Napoli, saying they want two point eight million. Problem giving them that, you know, we we have a lot of surplus cash, so. 
an extra one and a half million would be no harm to us like to to give away so we just uh, decide to give them that i suppose and uh so for the second game in today's episode we take on fiorentina here the serie once again also at the san siro as we take as uh all three of our games actually take place in the san siro as you will see anyway uh for this game against Fiorentina, I did again play the full-strength team as it was a week's break. Nothing happened in the first half whatsoever, as you see here. Uh, so it would, was nil at half-time. In the second half, then, uh, Fiorentina would come forward here with Kalinic. Uh, turn inside Rigani here. Kalinic. Yes, he there goes inside a sense of for a hot dog. Shot saved by Donnarumma. Put behind for a corner to make sure that it would remain at nil-nil. As it had been for a, a large port. And uh, then we would uh, have our attack here with Cartabia being... Fouled by Gonzalo, it would be out for a free kick here, to be taken by Suso. He scored her last season against Crotone in the league. Well, couldn't he replicate that against Fiorentina? Nearly. It was saved by Bart Dragovsky. Remember him from my Everton career mode last year? I had Dragovsky as my back goalkeeper. He's gone to Fiorentina. Anyway, uh, we get an email from the board here saying that they're a gla or happy with our progress in terms of brand exposure. And also, here for Giacomo Barrett, used 68 overall 25 year old striker who he will. Sell in fact that uh, whatever it was tiny club that offered to have, that offered to buy him as uh, some more player training here for the month of January. Sorry, I had to yawn. And we see another transfer offer from RB Leipzig for one of our strikers. This time, Milik, forty-four million euros. RB Leipzig really want to rob us of our striking duo. Anyway, uh, Benevuto here bid three hundred thousand three hundred thousand euros for Mario Picchinaki, and we feel they're not going to use. We accept it. But speaking of accepted. Napoli accept the 2.8 million euros we offered for at uh, Evra's regen, Ronald Camille. So we offer him a contract at the San Siro, see what he says to that. And also Don Roma, he accepts his contract extension, which isn't actually an extension because the extension was zero years, but regardless. Um, so for the third and final game at this episode, guys, we will take on Brescia here in the Coppa Nazionale. One thing that's interesting about our side here, you'll see it in a second, the side we put out. You'll have three five-star skillers, yes. Um, David Pino, Valerio Mancini, and Hashi Mastor, all five star skillers. And you saw, you would have seen, you can rewind it if you want, but the starting team we went with there, a lot of young players. A lot of young players. Anyway, Jose Maori would get us underway here with a shot saved by Kiriakidis, who has a very similar name to Christopher Kiriaku, who's our goalkeeper that's playing today. And by Niang would have a chance here, turn side shoot and score as well to make it Milan 1, Brescia 0, give us the lead at home in the Coppa Nazionale. We'd expect a win against the Serie B opposition. Obviously, we lost our first Coppa Nazionale game last season against Atalanta, which was, which was disappointing. But we got off the best possible start on this one with that goal from Mbaye Niang. Excellent finish from Mbaye Niang. Left foot shot right in the top corner. No chance for Kyriakidis in the Brescia goal. And uh, my manager obviously later that we take the lead in this cup tight. We will be expected to win quite comfortably. Following that then, from this throw-in, Hashim Astor would find David Pino uh, on this brink of half-time. He would find... Giannakos, who would find Mbainiang. Mbainiang with the shot, fails to double his goal tally there as he turns, but drags the left foot shot wide of the post, and as uh, the danger is averted for Brescia, as they are able to go into the break, just 1-0 down, and still in the tie, very much so. Into the second half then, and Calabria here would have his pass blocked. Giannakos would slide in, Valerio Mancini, who with the skill move, would find Mbainiang, whose finesse out is saved by Kyriakidis, and put out for a corner. Then Mancini would find... Mastor here, back to Niang, find Jose Mauri, and with the finesse shot, Jose Mauri would score in as well to make it Milan 2, Brescia 0, as our little midfielder from, where is he from? I don't know where Jose Mauri is from. Uh, makes it 2-0 to Milan here against Brescia. You know, even at this stage in the game, putting the tie to bed, to be honest, Brescia have offered nothing. We have a two-goal cushion as well, so they can't just get a fluke goal and right off of that because of our two-goal advantage. But a great finish from Jose Mario, nonetheless, as we double our advantage in this cup tie. Following that, then, uh, Jose Mario would be set through once again. who would be fouled, though, on the very, very edge of the penalty area by the Brescia man. I thought it was a penalty when the referee blew the whistle because I was sure that Jose Mario had, had entered the box at that stage. But as we'll see in a second, it's a free kick on the very, very edge of the penalty area, which I was frustrated by, you know, definitely. But... From the free kick, we would let Valerio Mancini take it, our young wonder kid, as he was the best free kick taker on the on the pitch at that time. And our young Italian, what does our young Italian do? The number thirty-two, from twenty-one yards, 
puts it into the top corner. That's what he does. Excellent, excellent free kick from Valerio Mancini as this young man's bright future gets it to a stunning start here in his full debut here. I think he'd come off the bench in one game or something. Uh, I'm not sure when's that one. I'm not, I think I used him in one game. I don't know if he's off the bench or, or starting, but this is definitely the first game that I remember him having any major contribution in. And now he's scored. Excellent goal, Valerio Mancini, our five-star skiller Italian. Off to the best possible start of his Milan career with that stunning free kick. Following that then, David Pino would uh, power down the wing here. Cut inside. Find Hashima Store, who would sweat the ball across to Mbainiang. As Mbainiang gets his second and Milan's fourth. To make it Milan four. Brescia nil as our French forward. Well, winger slash forward. We were playing as a forward in this game. Uh, finds the back of the net. Makes it Milan four. Brescia nil. And... I mean, if the tie wasn't beyond doubt, it definitely was here. I, I'd say it was beyond doubt before, but regardless, it's a second from Bayern Yang. Uh, wonderful. And then uh, Brescia would come forward here, uh, cross in from that man, in towards the other man, who would head the ball past Gianluigi John Roma into the back of the net to get Brescia a consolation goal. Following that cross into the box, header from, I couldn't see his name there, Cariacciolo, as he powers the ball into the back of the net with his head, to make it the final score, Milan one, or Milan four, Brescia one, and then following that we receive a, a transfer for Alessio Romagnoli here from Southampton of thirty one point five million euros. We reject definitely. We also see that uh, we have sold Pikinaki and Beretta, and uh, that uh, Ronald Camille has accepted his contract at, at Milan. He will join the squad as a backup left back. Hopefully he'll go into a good player. Evers region, of course, as I mentioned. Uh, following that, we get another transfer here for Luis Adriano, €7 million Euros from Bologna. We actually accept that offer because Luis Adriano is not currently being used in the side. And uh, this is how the table looks at the end of that episode, guys. With us at the top of the table, four points ahead of Udinese, who we play in the next episode. And in the next episode, we will take on Lazio in the quarterfinal of Coppa Nazionale as well, or in the coming episodes anyway. In the next episode, we face Napoli away from home, as well as Udinese at home in the Serie A. So I hope you're looking forward to that, guys. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Minecraft Mud very soon. And uh, stay tuned for that.